She is currently at uh, John Hopkins University, and she's going to tell us all about inference of utilities and time preference in sequential decision making. Ayan, thank you very much uh, for the nice uh, introduction. It's an honor to be here, to be actually invited here to give this uh, a talk on one of our recent works in this uh, direction. So um, as you can see from the subtitle, so I'm going to focus a little bit more on the general introduction on a, a broader topic related to this uh, inferencing utility and time preference problem, which is the inverse reinforcement learning. And more precisely, it's about the identifiability issue presented in this uh, general literature of inverse reinforcement learning. Actually, I... I just want to check if you're... If you're okay, it is on. Yeah, okay. okay. So um, actually, uh, we started to get interested in this uh, uh, topic of inverse reinforcement learning ever since I uh, worked at the Turing Institute with uh, Sam and Lukash there. And there we had our very first paper on the identifiability of uh, inverse reinforcement learning. And then recently, uh, together with Ren Yuan and one of her students uh, at the uh, 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 University of Southern California, uh, we started to think about generalizing the idea of applying inverse reinforcement learning uh, under this uh, context of potentially robot biasing and how uh, we can, uh, well, for um, robot advisor, how can uh, the agent learn better about uh, the client's uh, preferences in many different ways. So that's kind of a general picture of this uh, talk. So let me uh, start with a little bit of uh, introduction. So for decision making, the general goal will be work out or will be to work out a set of optimal feasible strategies under um, like a numerous set, a numerous different uh, motivations uh, that will factor in, like for instance, uh, the client's utility function, uh, the client's like a subjective way of measuring the value of time, which usually takes uh, takes the form of discounts rate. Well, as well as the risk uh, preferences, so on and so forth. So that's kind of the, I would say the forward process of solving this game where you have known uh, the information about those motivations, including these factors, and then you try to work out a uh, uh, optimal feasible strategy. But oftentimes uh, people get interested in, in the reverse process as well, such as, um, in uh, uh, behavioral uh, sciences, biology, and in psychology, we, uh, we have the scenarios where we want to infer or we want to guess what's driving the certain behavior that um, agent or um, an object is, is presenting. For instance, like in the psychotherapy, we should have this uh, centre type of uh, activities to figure out the, the patient's uh, state of mind, things like that. But under a more kind of related uh, application scenario, uh, as I mentioned, there is this uh, uh, now rising field of uh, robot advising uh, where we want to dedicate the decision making process investment to, uh, I would say, a computer or a certain algorithm. But there, uh, the algorithm or the computer itself has to figure out what's actually in the mind of the client so that they can have personalized uh, recommendations and the uh, financial investment strategy, things like that. So like I said, this problem of uh, trying to guess what's motivating the um, agent's behavior has been there out there for a long time. So um, in the control uh, community, one of the earliest questions raised in this direction would be, a date back to the Coleman uh, question, where uh, he asked whether it is possible to recover coefficients of a quadratic cost function from an observed linear control system. So this is one of the earliest problem of, I would say, inverse reinforcement learning ever happened in history. And then ever since then, uh, this type of problem has been there uh, in uh, uh, many different communities uh, well, one of the two more relevant community will be the economics and finance. So this one is the general question or general uh, economic version of the inverse reinforcement learning question in the economic community. That is to recover the uh, utility functions. 
at the beginning, uh, people started to think about static problems uh, where uh, they only care about guessing the immediate reward of an action, which is, well, in a learning sense, more of like a bend type of reward function guessing. And then uh, gradually uh, people started to migrate to a dynamic version. And, and then there's actually a, uh, a subfield in, uh, in econo uh, econometrics about uh, estimating the structural parameters and such a dynamic programming uh, problems. And then, uh, well, more related to the mathematical finance uh, community, uh, what, about 10 years ago, Yan had this paper about uh, discussing the connection between utility function and optimal consumption habits, things like that. So there they uh, had a first look at how people can infer the possible utility based on an observed set of consumption uh, habits of an agent. And they actually identify some of the issues there. So for instance, they uh, stated in the paper that there might be infinitely many of possible utilities that can lead to the presented uh, consumption behavior. And then, uh, so that's, well, since it's more of like a control perspective of looking at this problem. So, um, hypo, well, like on a higher level, it's kind of a backward looking uh, way of analyzing this relation. Uh, but in recent years, uh, Nicole has this paper uh, about recovering dynamic utility, but it's for a forward looking perspective where there's no Markovian connections happening uh, between the uh, utility uh, for utility process versus whatever people can observe. Rather, they have like a, a forward looking perspective through a, a SPDE uh, type of techniques. Uh, and there, the connection between uh, observable process versus the um, utility process is from this uh, set of martingale conditions. So it's no longer Markovian or it's no longer a DPP, but it's a different type of relation. But still, uh, people try to figure out what is exactly this connection and how can we do uh, both ways of implication. And a uh, more financial related topic would be the robot advisor, as I said. So for uh, the, the reason why we wanted to have the robot advisor in the first place is that it might be or potentially be a cheaper and more knowledgeable in, in terms of like a thinking capacity compared to a human advisor. Uh, so this paper is one of the earliest paper where people work out a reinforcement learning algorithms to help the robot advisor to do optimal investment strategies. So that's still the, uh, from the motivation to action type of uh, uh, way of solving the problem. And there, and the second paper actually started to considering the, um, the inverse problem. So there they had a one period problem for the robot advisor. And in particular, they uh, imagined that there should be two agents happening for the uh, robot advisor, uh, robot advising process. So one agent should be responsible for the inference part, that is to solve an inverse optimization problem for the agent's uh, uh, utility function. And then after having this information, uh, it will be passed down to the a second agent, which, which should be responsible for the investment, so the actual investment. So, but that's the inverse optimization problem is actually what we are interested in. So that's for, it's kind of the partial solutions to work out the utility or just try to guess the utility of the agent. And what about like the risk preference or the time preference? So here, Sebastian and uh, maybe two of his students worked out this very nice work about learning about the, uh, an agent's uh, risk aversion and they adopted the inverse reinforcement learning algorithm already. And uh, in particular, they pointed out that if it is uh, possible to do interactive questioning in between the robot advisor and, uh, and the clients, then it's possible to ident identify the agent's uh, risk aversion. Uh, so what we are trying to do here is trying to see whether it's possible that by utilizing inverse reinforcement lear learning, we can solve both the inference of utility and inference of uh, risk, F, uh, risk uh, preferences or time preferences at the same time. All right, so uh, let's consider like a really simple question that I throw to a robot advisor. That is the good old optimal consumption allocation problem. So we have all the um, nice uh, conditions for, the, for this uh, uh, problem. 
except that we don't necessarily know exactly what this beta and the U1 and U2 are. So uh, just to review of, uh, just to do a little bit review of the setting. So we do have a risk-free asset and to one a risky asset, which is uh, driven by a brown, uh, dramatic brown emotion. And then this is the objective function that's, uh, that we are providing towards the investment agent after getting all the information about this uh, time preference and the utility functions. But the problem here is that uh, both this uh, beta as well as this UIs, they're coming from the client. So it might be really subjective. And if we consider um, uh, robotizing as kind of a service, we do want to personalize it and try to get as precise as possible towards what's actually the clients are thinking. All right. And here we use this uh, 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 X uh, alpha C to denote it the um, uh, wealth process under a given um, consumption allocation policy. And then here beta is a general um, time preference process. All right. And then of course, uh, so this, the previous slides, this kind of the classical uh, potentially control problem uh, in a continuous time setting uh, uh, that people usually uh, are facing with. And then uh, since we're talking about learning, then here will be the corresponding uh, discrete time uh, in uh, re reinforcement learning version of that uh, optimal consumption allocation pro uh, problem. All right, so once again, here the beta and U1 and U2 are potentially not known to the uh, in investment agent yet. And it's up to the inference agents to guess what they are. All right, so let's think about this. Suppose that we do have certain information about this beta and it's only the U1 and U2s that are not known then this problem for um, the inference agents uh, will kind of uh, become a classical problem for the inverse reinforcement learning community. So there it is possible for us to uh, learn U1 and U2 by maybe adopting one of the popular uh, inverse, inverse reinforcement learning algorithm. Okay, and later we will talk about what exactly uh, inverse RL is and then how, to what extent, this inverse RL can help us in solving this problem. But uh, we are also interested in to look into the case where beta is not known to us. And then there's like two different degree of not knowing. The first degree will be, well, we still, uh, we, we're still pretty certain that this beta is of kind of a exponential type. It's only that the uh, discount rate that is unknown to us. So if that's the case, can we still utilize the inverse RL algorithm? And uh, can we get some kind of accurate graphs of this uh, unknown information? And then there's like a deeper level of not knowing this beta that is, we don't know the general form at all. And then uh, what can we do about that in that, direct, uh, in that situation? So let's first uh, look at the, uh, the, the easiest scenario first. So let's say that this beta is actually known to us. This beta, it's, a, it's, it's exponential and then we know the discount rate. And then that uh, goes back to the classical inverse reinforcement learning type of literature. So one of the first paper about inverse reinforcement learning dates back like 24 years ago. And there uh, they have uh, an, an, the first inverse RL algorithm to uh, guess one reward function based on whatever is, is observed from the optimal uh, agents. So in particular, in this paper, they pointed out that it's actually a degenerate problem because there will be multiple reward function, including a, um, a constant function that can lead to the uh, observed uh, optimal behavior. So that also uh, coincide with whatever uh, Yen uh, discovered in the um, investment case. But to resolve this uh, problem, uh, they proposed what we call a max margin type of model, where among all possible candidate reward function that leads to worse the um, optimal behavior, they will choose the one reward function that can best distinguishes the observed behavior from the rest of other policies. So that's uh, uh, the max margin models 
And you probably will see such type of uh, choice criteria in many other inverse, uh, inverse reinforcement learning algorithms. So here I would like to say that in the learning context, uh, what we do know, it's not like the actual form of the, um, uh, or like the explicit expression of the um, optimal policy, but rather it's a bunch of sample trajectory samples out of this uh, um, optimal uh, agents. So that actually brings another layer of difficulty that is uh, this true problem, estimation and identification, they're all intertwined with one another. So uh, that actually leads to two big categories of inverse reinforcement learning algorithms. So it's a matter of uh, whether you value the estimation more or you do also value about the identification problem. So the first category will be the uh, apprentice learning or imitation learning part. So in there, they focus on more on the estimation part. Uh, so that the actually inverse reinforcement learning is an intermediate step towards the learning uh, of the trajectory distribution. And the second part will be the uh, generating inverse reinforcement learning algorithm where they do care about whatever, what's the um, output of the reward function from those algorithm. And here I would like to point out the second major type of inverse RL models that will be the max ant models. So again, we still have this uh, uh, eoposeness of this inverse reinforcement learning algorithm, but there they have a different way of selecting the um, one reward function that will be choose the one that maxis, maximize the causal entropy. All right, so that's a different way of uh, resolving the eoposeness. So, uh, but we do want to ask this question, whether uh, we're satisfied with whatever uh, reward function ident identified out of those uh, popular reinforce uh, inverse reinforcement learning algorithm. As so uh, what uh, the Lucas critique put it, uh, we probably want to learn more about the genuine uh, or the true underlying reward function for uh, an agent. The reason is that uh, we probably at some time uh, are interested in how the same agent will behave under a very different uh, environment. So there, if we do not have enough information about the true reward function, then um, this type of uh, 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 new planning will be a little off uh, compared to the real optimality. So that's the reason why we care about this identify, uh, identifiability issue in inverse reinforcement learning. And we want to see uh, how can we resolve the eoposeness of this problem? Uh, so as I, as I said, so uh, it's a well accepted uh, phenomenon that uh, uh, the, the inverse reinforcement learning problem is not so well, well posed. Uh, to summarize the eoposeness, it will be that if we do the reinforcement learning, that is from the reward function to an optimal policy, this mapping in general is not injective, so, so, the, so that it's not um, invertible. And what those two big categories of inverse RL algorithm does is that they, they externally introduce a selection criteria. Well, the problem with this selection criteria will be it's very hard to verify that it's indeed the true criteria for the problem itself. So here uh, in this uh, paper with uh, Sam and Lukash, we we first provided the full of uh, uh, characterization of this non-identifiability issue, where uh, the family of uh, candidate reward function is actually uh, in the same kind of uh, homeomorphic to uh, the, the set of possible uh, value functions that we're looking at. So we have like much much higher degree of freedom compared to the one reward function identified out of this inverse, uh, inverse reinforcement learning algorithms. So here's one remark. Uh, in this uh, identifiability work, we particularly interested in this entropy regularized uh, MDP setting. Uh, so there are like the different surveys about why people care about the entropy regularization. So one of the survey says that, well, uh, if without uh, this entropy regularization, then it will be futile to do inverse reinforcement learning at all. So you have no hope in terms of recovering the true uh, reward function. So that's kind of a side note towards this uh, problem. And then in order to resolve this uh, non-identifiability issue, we provided two different ways. The first one is that uh, 
if it is possible, then uh, by having a second set of observation of the same agent, but performing on a different MDP environment, then it will be enough for us to identify the true reward function up to a constant shift, of course. And also uh, we need some other um, technical assumptions there. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I, uh, I, I have time to uh, elaborate on those technical conditions, but basically we do have some mild conditions on the uh, MDP environment that the, the agent is performing into. And the second viable solution to the non-identifiability issue will be having more structural assumptions on the MDP environment. So here in particular, in the most general case, uh, which is uh, the finite horizon uh, uh, MDP problem, uh, this additional information will be something like the full action rank type of condition. So, uh, well, forget about this uh, gigantic vector, uh, the meaning or higher level idea of this, con uh, uh, this uh, condition will be whatever your uh, starting state will be in, within uh, the time horizon, it is for sure that you can traverse towards any different uh, state and action pair state. So that makes the inferencing of, uh, uh, the, the inference of a reward function becomes possible. Otherwise, if there's like an action, uh, state action pair that you will never step into, then you will never know the value of your reward function at that uh, state action pair. So that's the general idea of this uh, 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 additional uh, structural uh, assumption. But here are some remarks. So we all know that uh, there are some seemingly ideal structural assumptions, especially on the payoff function for the control problem or the uh, reinforcement learning problem, so to speak. So for instance, uh, people like to work with linear quadratic uh, type of models. And sometimes people consider uh, an action free, action independent type of reward function. So those are really nice uh, additional assumptions on the payoff functions. But uh, what, we discuss, uh, what we discover is that these assumptions are not enough to resolve the identifiability issue, but they have some upside. So there, those uh, condition for identifiability becomes easier to verify and then uh, it's kind of uh, uh, more interpretable to us. And it's, so to speak, more um, executable in a sense. So here are some uh, just the numerical results to showcase that, well, if you only have one set of observation by running, let's say the maxn type of uh, inverse R uh, algorithm, you are way off from the true value function. Whereas if you have two set of observations, then it becomes more accurate. Okay, so let's get down to the uh, original problem that I throw to the uh, robot advisor. So here I would like to infer the reward and discount function at the same time. So here is the general, uh, is the general problem that uh, the, the agents need to solve. So here we don't know the beta and we don't know the F and possibly we don't know the G, which is the terminal cost. So the challenges, the additional challenges for inverse RL is that, let's say we have the first level of unknown, uh, unknownness for the uh, time preference or the discount faction, that it, it is still of an exponential type, but we don't know the um, discount rate. The good news is that we still have the dynamic programming principle so that will at least the reinforcement learning algorithm still works or so makes sense. But the bad news is that well, according to our previous uh, study, the inverse RL algorithms out there can only lead to or learn clearly about the potentially time dependent Q function, which is the uh, RL version of the Hamiltonian. But we cannot go any further. We cannot decompose the reward function from the Q function. So that's the main issue about the uh, current uh, popular inverse RL algorithms. But if we, we consider even deeper level of not knowingness for the uh, time preference, then we have additional challenges. That is, it becomes a time inconsistent problem in general. And uh, for that, uh, we probably have to second guess ourselves whether it is viable still to consider a reinforcement learning algorithm at all to start with, let alone inverse reinforcement learning problem. Uh, but if even if we zoom in to the pre-commitment problem where we can still have some kind of a DPP going on, but the, the bad news up there still persists. It's still no, uh, no hope to just uh, disentangle the uh, reward function from the Q function in general. So is it uh, that it is uh, just uh, impossible to do the inferencing 
at all. So uh, we take a second look at the problem for the robot advisor. And uh, we, we took the easy way out that we focused prim primarily to the pre-commitment problem. So there, the good news still is that the dynamic programming principle holds, making the reinforcement learning algorithm uh, making sense uh, here. But I do want to remark that uh, for a generating time inconsistent problem, even though we have more theoretical results on this uh, subjects, it is much, much less has been done in the learning, uh, devising learning algorithm uh, uh, type of uh, areas. Mm -hmm. So here uh, we, uh, so for, for this lemma, we guarantee that, well, the, well, the, the, the control problem or the uh, reinforcement learning problem still makes sense. And uh, the next results tells us, well, thank God that for this particular type of uh, problem for the robot advisor, it is still possible to identify uh, the uh, time preference as well as a utility function at the same time. So here, uh, uh, some remarks about this uh, results. Uh, we still try to disentangle the identifiability issue away from the estimation, meaning that uh, we have the full information about the actual form of those uh, observed uh, uh, allocation and uh, consumption policy. And then the, the, the reason why we can have this identifiability re, uh, results is partially due to the fact that we are actually really consider a structure, special structure for the payoff function that gives us some advantage for this identifiability problem. And then here, uh, I didn't specify the technical conditions, but uh, the high level idea behind this conditions or that that's actually coincides with the additional structural information that I mentioned for the uh, classical inverse reinforcement learning problem. And then here, the identifiability is up to a, a fine transform transformation, but it, that, that's enough for us for, to do the optimal consumption allocation problem. And then we do have similar identifiability results for the infinite time horizon case. And the proof for this uh, uh, theorem is of a constructive type. So at the end of this proof, you will have the actual form of the uh, inferred um, uh, time uh, preferences and the associated functions. So I think I'm on time. <laughs> so let's, uh, uh, let me just uh, finish up this uh, talk by uh, uh, pointing out the two papers that uh, included in, in this work. So uh, I hope that by uh, having uh, listened to this talk, you have enough motivation to, or like convincement for yourself to, to believe that uh, the inverse reinforcement learning uh, problem, they are relevant. And then the identifiability issue is actually uh, really crucial to, uh, in order to have a better uh, resolution to many of uh, many of those practical problems. And then if you're interested in uh, more details about exactly what this identifiability issue means in, in inverse reinforcement learning under different uh, probably sub settings of those learning algorithm, uh, you're welcome to check uh, one of our earlier works in this direction. And then uh, about this uh, particular problem for the robot advisor, then we, we do have additional results about the arithmetic, uh, arithmetic design and also some, some of the analysis with respect to those uh, uh, algorithm uh, in this uh, very recent work, which is now available on, our, on SSRN as well, as well as archive. And for that, I will conclude and thank you very much for your attention. Hey, thank you.